Hey y'all, about the again here. Uh, gonna finish up this video, this replay that I had of Zonk. Uh, playing one of Frosty Street's little cash money set and go table. Uh, cash prize to the winner and the winner only. So we are playing for first here. We're not playing for MMR, which would affect some of our decisions. We're not playing for like a first, second, third, which would affect some of our decisions. We are going for the win and the win only. Uh, so let's hit start and go from here. Um, seven Colossi in position. Terran 2 2. Not a fan. Don't like Colossi. We have 23, 24 bets. Not exactly a hand we're going to speculate with, especially with a short stack all in in first position. We are not going to call this. <sighs> mm. Ooh. Turn that off. What's going to happen here? Zonk folds, Sunny Days picks up some much needed chips. Six ultras. Next to last act, Zerg 3 3. This is a different situation. Um, if it checks to us, I like a raise here. We are not committed to our hand. If we get three bet, we are probably letting it go. But we have a pretty decent start. We have some tanks up front. We have Zerg 3 3. Could turn into Zerg 4 4 with like mutas, with corruptors, with. Hydras, lurkers, eh, I wouldn't be a big fan of lurkers and six handed. Um, but if it checks to us, we should probably raise some amount of the time here. 24, good, like it, good raise. Papa Smurf folds. Let's it go. 15 wild cards. This is definitely a good start. Um, Ugh. Let me, ugh. Excuse me, sorry. Let me pause for a second and talk about some wild cards. Everybody in the community loves wild cards. I like wild cards. They're good. You can get a lot of really good shit with wild cards. They're not that strong. Don't overbet them just because you have wild cards. They are not battle cruisers. They are not carriers. They are not ravens. They will not carry your hand. Here's the problem. People go like, 25 wild cards. I'm all in. I could get anything. I have 25 units. That's fucking crazy. And then you roll like five air units, one capital ship, some marines, a couple hellbats, you know. You get like maybe five or six good units in there and you end up against like full count viking stalker, you know. Something like versatile, something not great, but a lot of units. It's going to shut you the fuck down. Um, wild card is good for filling in gaps. If you have marines, like good counter marine, put your wild cards up front. You will probably draw a decent number of tanks to keep the marines alive. If you have... Um, I don't know. Let's say something like ultras. Cool. Great tanks. Put the wild cards in back. Hopefully you draw a good amount of DPS. What's not good is when you have like 20, 25 wild cards, you bet on the first card, you draw a junk on the second card, and then you continue to play aggressively. You will get called down by average to above average hands probably at some times, and they will beat you. Do not overvalue the wild card just because they're wild cards. They synergize with a lot of stuff. They can be very strong. They are usually not that strong. Calm down. Take it easy. Assess the situation. Go from there. Having said that, in late position here with 15 wild cards, this is definitely a raise. Um, we have 225 chips. Antis are only 8. We have almost 30 bets. Uh, even with Goldie raising in front, this is an easy call. We are going to take a second card here and see what happens. I hope we're going to take a second card here and see what happens. Zonk folds. Interesting. Okay. Eh. Could be read dependent. Could just be one of those times where you're not feeling it. It's okay. Papa Smurf makes the call in late position. Goldie checks second card. Papa Smurf question mark checks it. What do we have? Goldie with Tempest Mine, not great. Papa Smurf with Ultra Infester, not great. Um, I don't think we win the three-way there. 
there's enough random stuff that can happen. I think we win 1v1 against either of those players. Well, I again, it depends on the second card. I will say I think we were ahead of those players on the first card. Nine Phoenix, third to act. We're not going to play around with this. No upgrades on the board for us. Going to check fold, see what happens. I think I might actually go all in here. Yeah. And insta-called by Frosty. I probably lose this. What's Frosty got? High Templar, yeah. I'll blow it against the voids. That sucks. Oh well, we tried. When you get countered, you get countered. Excuse me. And he's up to 12. We're in second position with three carriers. Per us, 2 2. Five handed. I like the min rays. We're getting high enough to where the min rays is substantial, so I'm okay with that. Um, it should get us one or two callers, I think. And then we can play from there. We are definitely looking for a strong second card. That's on the lower end of what we're looking for. A check call looks great, and we should take this pot down pretty easily. Papa Smurf definitely got the 24 Hellions on the second card and just decided to shut down. Entirely fine. Entirely fine. Nice little pop for Zonk. Moving up into first place, hell yeah. And we get seven carriers this time in first position. All right, so... Um, there's been a lot of kind of meta changes in the time that Battle Poker's been around. Um, earlier on, nobody check raised. Nobody check raised. If you bet, it was because you had a hand. If you checked, you didn't have a hand. So I check raised a lot. Like a lot. Like a lot. And poker players started playing the game. And people started realizing what I was doing, and so now people check raise all the time for first position. Therefore, I love this play. Um, first position raises should generally command some form of respect. Like, you're raising before you've seen anybody else do anything means a lot. Like, it means you have power. Um, however, it's not something that a lot of people do a lot these days. So what people read of you from this could be anything they could think what the fuck he's just bluffing they could think holy shit he actually does have a good hand they could be like well maybe he's just fucking with us trying to take down some extra chips and i'm gonna play back at him which would be great in this situation um but i think i touched this on the first half of this video like you don't want to do the same thing always in in the same position so it is totally okay in first position with a very strong hand to check. It is probably okay to check a large portion of the time in first position. You should still sometimes raise with strong hands in first position. Keep people guessing. Don't do the same thing every time. Make them try to figure out what you're doing. Because there's going to be some amount of the time that you're going to raise in first position and everybody folds and nobody's going to know what the fuck you did. You could do that same thing three orbits later and just be like, you know what, I'm not in position, but fuck it. They folded the last time. They're showing me respect. I'm going to do it again and try to take down another pot. Um, it's all about trying these little situations, seeing how people respond, and playing accordingly. Unfortunately, this is not like a big, long, regular hold and poker tournament that can last eight hours, two days, three days, whatever, and you gain information as you play against people at your table. This is a super turbo where the blinds are going up super, super fast. You have very limited amounts of time to assimilate the information that your opponents are giving you. Um, so you kind of have to see what they're doing and react very quickly, very accordingly. 
Um, taking shots at pots like this is definitely something more people should be doing more often. It's not something you do all the time. It's not something you do often. Like, it's, it's an absolute often. But people should, on average, be doing this more often than I see them doing. Just to throw that out there. Having said that, we're raising 3x under the gun. Let's see what we get. Terran 2-2. So we are still going to be a little afraid of, like, Marine Battlecruiser. Marines and Battlecruisers, I should say. Not specifically Marine Battlecruiser. Um... Thors could be a problem. Aiden Festers. Um, the Aiden Festers specifically will help us counter BCs. That's about all that we're getting out of that. Maybe some Marines too. So actually, that's not a terrible counter. Now we get re-raised. We raised first act on the first card with carriers. Got a call from Frosticles in middle position. Uh, we bet the second card. 24 into, I'd have to have 48, 46, that's like 96, into like, so 24 to like 100. He was getting about 4 to 1. He re-raises us 46 on top, so now we're getting a little bit better than 4 to 1 to call. I think this is an easy call. Um, we're worried about like Viking Corruptor, Battlecruiser, I can corrupt her battle cruiser specifically because of the Terran 2 2 upgrades. Probably not Cyclone. Phoenix won't do it. Unless it's like 25 Phoenix and they have support. Um, so we're looking at a pretty narrow range here. Um, however, there is the fact that Frosty Bet's so small, we're getting excellent odds. I think this is a pretty solid call. Even if we call and we are wrong, we still have about 150 chips to play with. Actually, more like almost 170. With the antis at 12, we have close to 15 bets. It's not ideal, but it's not bad. Um, if we win this, we're in excellent position. We're going to take over first by a long shot. And Frosty being the player he is, we know he loves to bluff just a little bit more than other people I feel like he usually bets bigger when he's bluffing on average. I could be wrong about that. I still think this is a pretty standard call. I think you you I think this is I think this is close to a hundred percent call. I don't like a raise here. You're playing almost naked carriers. Like you the investors are specifically going to counter, like I said, Battle Cruiser Marine. I think this needs to be a call. Yeah, I'm going to land there. This needs to be a call. And we fold. Okay. Um, I'm actually really curious. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Cancel. Pause. We missed it. Damn. I don't want to back up to see it. I'm, I'm really curious what he made that play with. Last to act... One Ultralisk, Zerg 1-1. One, one. Not much value here. We have plenty of chips. We've been mixing it up enough lately. We're not we're not gonna bluff here. We shouldn't bluff here, I should say. Especially with Sunny Days all in. Zero fold equity against somebody who's all in. They cannot fold. Fifteen Vikings, second to act, or next to last to act. And I think this needs to be a check more often than a raise, but you should raise some percentage of the time, maybe like one out of every four times, one out of every three, give or take. We did get a call from Sunny Days. We do have a drawing hand. We do have decent anti-air. Papa Smurf also calls. That's a problem. 18 Marauders, not what we're looking for. We're in second position. This should be a check almost 100% of the time. What is Sunny Days going to do? If Sunny Days all ends, it's not a significant all in. I'm going to just check and see. Sunk with some decent... Uh, what are the counts? No, the Corruptors are going to win. 
Yeah, the Marauder's already gone. Yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunate. Three stalkers, not interested. Even at a little bit over 10 bets, we're not even going to entertain the idea of like bluffing at this. There's just not enough equity, not enough value. Now we have DTs. This is an interesting spot. Okay, so we're on our second card. Everybody check the first card. Um, so... We have two options. Either everybody has nothing, and we're going to be playing against just their second cards. Or somebody's lying. We're getting checked. They were going for a check raise. They didn't get it. And we're probably about to get blasted out of the pot this hand. Um, with us being as short stacked as we are, and with as many chips in the pot as there are, I love a min raise here. Make it 28 to go, total. Um, you're going to fold out most everybody that didn't hit their second card. And I think you're going to draw with a lot of those people that hit a second card. Um, if we're getting check raised, they're probably going to raise us after we min bet, and we can safely fold. Um, or we can reevaluate, like if they min raise or make it 2x, like it, it, it's not. Mm. Like I, I've said this before, I think it was also in the previous video, with naked DTs, especially with like as low as a count of 12. Your goal is to take the pot down before a showdown. You want to bluff everybody else out of the pot, keep the DTs as like backup equity in case like it gets called and they just don't have a they don't have a detector. So like you take half the pot still, right? You can bluff off your old stack, split the pot, whatever. Um if you bet more than the min raise, I don't think you fold that many more hands and you're risking quite a bit more chips out of your already preciously low stack. Um I think the min bet accomplishes what it needs to most of the time, doesn't extend your risk too much, and still leaves you plenty of room to safely fold and continue playing if you get re-raised. Frosty raises, that changes things a little bit. Um, if Goldie had raised, I think I lean more towards a fold here. With Frosty doing it, I think we call. We do not call to make a profit. We call to protect our blind. It is a min bet. It is only another 14 chips to go. We will still be at about 9 bets going into the next hand if we lose. Again, if we get re-raised, it's not that big of a commitment. We can safely fold and continue playing. Um... And I think Frosty's range in particular here is wide enough that, like, if calling is a mistake, it is a very small mistake. Um, I do not like re-raising trying to get him to fold. Um, I don't think he makes his play with nothing. And I think we're overextending our risk a little bit too much trying to go for the fold by re-raising him here in case he has nothing. Yeah, I think I'm going to land on a call here. It may be a slight mistake, but I don't think it's a huge mistake. We do call. Alright, let's see what he's got. Ravens! No! Happens. Oh well. Like we said, not a huge mistake. We have enough chips to continue playing the game. We're not thrilled. We're kind of back in danger mode, but we are still in the game. We are not necessarily short stacked. We are definitely not pushed fold yet. Alright, 41 Marines, Zerg 2 2. Definitely a check in early position. I don't want there to be a bet. But if there is a small bet, we might call. From Frosty in late position, this should be a call. 100%. Again, we're not terribly worried about the Zerg 2-2. Oh, oh. 
This is spicy. I like this. Um, I did not really consider this. This is sort of a semi-bluff. You have equity. Like, 45 Marines can do some damage. You definitely draw well. Anything tanky in front, you can do some serious damage. Um, but you're putting pressure on Frosticles, and you're letting him know that you're not going to be run over by these men-bets constantly. He's going to have to check himself and be a little bit more careful with you acting behind him to continue making those shots at the pot. We are praying for a five-way check pot here. Um, 15 Swarm Hosts, not enough to uh, call this two, this three x-rays. We are going to let Sunny Days and Papa Smurf fight this one out. Let it go. However that song goes. I never watched Frozen. Oh, we called. Oh, boy. That's actually going to work out really well. Interesting. No air units. There could have easily been some air units. Vikings immediately land because there are no other air units. Our swarm hosts are going to get away scot-free here. We should actually split the pot 50-50, giving us a little bit of net profit. Down. All right. Cool. It worked out. We do need to kill those last four Vikings for us to profit on this hand, though. And right now, we are not targeting them. Queen's going to work down to three. Ten seconds left. Need those. Oh, come on, Locust. Come on, Locust. One more. Yeah! A little profit. All right. Good shit. We are back in the game, about 15 bets, not bad. 14 siege tanks, last position, no upgrades. Um, against an all-in. Let's see, I can't math, let me wait to see how much the call button is. Okay, um, <laughs> so, 14 siege tanks, definitely strong. Stronger in a multi-way pot. We don't have our second card yet. We don't have upgrades. Um, both players are all in and we're closing the action. This, I think, is a pretty clear call. Um, we're getting, math again, like a little worse than four to one. 37 into 145, that's like, uh, close to 4 to 1, yeah. Um, we only need to be right 1 out of 5 times for profit. We have great anti-ground, it's going to sit in the back. We have a great draw, synergizes with a lot of stuff. No more betting on the second card. We can just call, see what we get, let it run. I think... This is a great spot to knock out one, if not two, players. Get some chips in. Yeah. Call. Definitely call here. Hoping, of course, to draw anti-air on the second card. Vikings would be ideal since they give us 1-1. One, one. Marine's not really playable here since we have Siege Tanks. Unfortunately, a fold. Um... Cyclones wouldn't be the worst draw here. Well, we would have done fine against Sunny Days. Goldie had a set of rights. It is okay. Not every play will work out every time. That is how poker goes. Can Sunny Days survive? Where are these Ravens at? They need 25 to put a turret down. There's 25. Are we getting turrets? Are we getting turrets? No turrets? No turrets? Am I right on that? 25 for a... Oh, it doesn't say how much it costs. That sucks. All right. Back to the action. We have 10 bets. Middle position, three carriers, Terran 2-2. Two, two. Men race from Papa Smurf. I don't hate a call here, depending on the action, if these two fold. 
I'm also okay with a fold here. Um, again, we talked about this previously. As the antis go up, effectively chip stacks go down. We don't have enough chips in our stack to really go for the implied odds to draw for a big hand. But three carriers have some value. They're not bad. Um, I would not mind seeing a call there. Two disruptors, not going to happen. Not enough. Not enough. Goldie all in after Frostclaw's raises. We let this go. Good stuff. Yeah. Goldie rocking it out with the Ghost Immortal. That's going to probably win it here. Only four Tempests. This ghost should be able to knock it down. Pretty decent DPS coming out from the ghosts. Very nice. Very nice. Eleven Disruptors. Second to act. Protoss 1-1. One, one. So one thing to note, Protoss 1-1, one, one, not really going to affect the Disruptors. The Disruptor attack is a spell cast, so it is not affected by a weapon upgrade, so it doesn't get bonus damage. It does get the bonus armor, bonus shields, but we're not really worried too much about that with Disruptors. Uh, they do run away, so there's a good chance they're going to survive regardless. Um, early position, 9 bets left. I don't think I make a play here. I think you have a decision if somebody min raises. The problem with calling the min raise, say it comes from like Papa Smurf, Frosticles. Um, I mean, we don't really care what Sunny Days does right here. He's so short in chips. Um, but like if Papa Smurf, Frosticles plays the hand, we are suddenly in a really bad position. We have decent anti-ground. We have a decent card for a split, but we have to act first after the, after the second card. Not going to be fun. I would recommend just folding in this spot. Don't try to get fancy out of position with the blinds this high. Um, yeah, I think just a check fold is good here. All right, we raise. After Goldie checks, early position, sunny days. Yeah, I, mm. sunny days should have called with almost anything here. Like, if you have one Hellion fold, sure, but... Anything reasonable, even halfway reasonable, needs to go in there. So you still have a chance if you win the pot. We're now heads up. Oh, gosh. <sighs> it doesn't stop. Um, Eight liberators. Six liberators, I'm sorry. Even with my glasses, I'm blind. Um, decent pickup. Not a great count. We don't have the stack to make much of a play here. If we check and pop a surf bets, we have to lay this down, I think. We do not have the anti-air with only six liberators to survive any kind of hand that has any decent air. Um, and I don't think he's gonna bet like an only ground hand here. Um, if he goes check, check, we have a chance. If we bet, I think we lose to anything that calls like, I, I just, I don't think betting a... I don't think we fold many things that beat us here. Which should be the goal of betting here. It should be to make fold make hands better than ours fold. And I don't think we fold anything better than what we have. I think this needs to just go check on our end. Check, check. And wild cards are going to give us some issues. That carrier against six liberators, the carrier should win. Plus the Tempest, plus the Archon. Yeah. <sighs> there go the Disruptors. 140 chips go Papa Smurf's way. Papa Smurf pulling out ahead, almost at 400 chips. Pretty decent lead. Seven oracles, first to act. Yeah, definitely a check. There's no play here. Not enough oracles, not enough chips. And this is where we really start having to pay attention, all right? Um, after we fold this hand, which we will probably fold this hand or just check it down to completion, whatever. 
Um, we're going to be at six and a half bets. Five and a half bets. I'm sorry. Um, with one bet already going in. So we'll be down to 100 and 110 chips behind after we ante next hand. Um, we basically have one orbit to go before we're all in. We will be in last position next hand. Next hand is going to be a great spot to bluff shove, no matter what we have, if it checks around to us. Um, it will be a great time to value shove if we get an insane hand that checks around to us. All right, let me, let me back that up. If we get a decent, above average hand, great spot to bluff, or not bluff, sho like shove. If we get an amazing hand, if we get Raven's Carriers Battle Cruisers, I am probably raising it to 60. Um, I want to give other people a chance to stay in the pot when I am that strong. Um, the reason that with the mediocre to the above average hand that we're raising all in is that we want to fold hands slightly better than ours. Um, we're not going to get Raven's Battle Cruiser's uh, carriers to fold with an all in. We're not going to get them to fold with the 60 bet either, whatever. But... In this next position, in this next hand, with what we have, we're going to get a lot of hands that should probably be calling in that position, based on like what we would be raising in that spot, to probably fold. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's wait until the action lights hand. We'll go over there. Talk some more about them. Um, Nine Siege Tanks with Seven Oracles, kind of similar to the Oracle hand from the last video that I did with Song. Oracles, just, eh, not quite good enough here. Papa Smurf does raise. We are going to fold here. Goldie calls. We are going to fold here. Sunny Days is forced all in. Well, as the carriers used to hate seeing the Tempest, now with the Tempest nerf, I think it's all right. With these uh, Archons coming in, might be a different story. Plus the carriers do have 2-2, two, two, so that's going to help them a little bit with the uh, damage here on Tempest. But yeah, I think the Tempests are still too much for the carriers with the uh, Archons oiling on them. And we are down to four. And that puts us in last position. So... Again, we were talking about this. Also, with the antis going up to 24, we have like four bets left. That escalated quickly. This should be a shove almost 100% of the time. Even with the zerglings, um, if it goes check, 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 this should be a shove. 100%. Good. Good, good, good. I like it. What's Frosty going to do? Fold. Good stuff. We have just almost doubled our chip stack off of one bluff. This is why, again, going back to the previous video, when I was talking early on about like why you tighten up early on, don't play the bluffs, don't really play the draws unless you know it's super in your favor, pot odds-wise. Um, just, just don't get fancy. Play straightforward. Because those pots are not going to matter as much as these pots. Um, if you had had some crazy hand where you go like, you raise to three, somebody else raises to nine, you raise to 25, they go to 50, you call. That's a huge hand on the first hand with an ante of one, right? Look at our pot size right here. It's the same pot size as if you had gone three, nine, 25, 50 on that first hand. That's already how much is in the pot, just for you stealing it. That's why you don't bluff early on. Save your bluffs, save your tricks for later on in the game, when it matters. When you can get all of these, how do I point up to that? All of these chips. All of these chips. All of these chips. Further. I can't go that far, but whatever. You see what I'm pointing at? This, this, this. All of these chips. Bluff when it's this big, not when it's like four or eight or whatever. Seven disruptors here. 
not much of a play. We should just check, see what comes on the second card. If we get there, there's the raise. Should definitely just let this one go. Yeah. Let it go. Seven Liberators, second position out of four. Again, easy check. We don't have the count to go nuts. We don't have the anti-air with Liberators to go nuts. We definitely have the anti-ground. Um, Pop and Smurf is doing a really good job of just pressuring. He's not committing. He is putting chips in the pot. He is making the other three here make decisions for significantly larger portions of their stack. But he's not committing himself. He is going to slowly bleed all three of these players dry unless they make a play before they get too short. Which, let's take a second to look over here. Six bets. Five bets. Two bets. Not even. Um, these stack sizes can't make him fold. You have no fold equity when you shove like this. If Papa Smurf has anything reasonable when you shove, he should call here to knock you out and take your chips. Because he knows that as you get shorter, your raising range is going to be wider. You're going to be playing more hands because you're closer to death. You need to make chips before you blind out. So, as you get shorter, you're going to be shoving more hands. Papa Smurf can profitably continue putting pressure on you and then also call with slightly worse hands than he normally would. Because his worse range, a little bit worse range, is still better than most of the hands you're going all in with in that situation. Nine Siege Tanks. I mean, with Frosticles already showing interest in the pot, we just have to let this go. We don't have... Oh, ooh. Uh, this is a close to Stone Cold Bluff. That's... Okay. So let's talk about what just happened. That was a... Uh, a raise big enough to matter to Papa Smurf, but it put Frosticles all in. So Zonk wanted to go all in with the Night Siege tanks. Why do I not? Well, mm, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Why would I like this play? Frosticles. Actually, let's talk about why I don't like this play. Um, Frosticles, at a level one scenario, when you're only thinking about your own cards, not how your opponents are going to respond, not how they're thinking, not anything like that. Just, you're playing your own cards, period, point blank. If Frosticles had a not nutty hand with the stack that he has, he should have just gone all in. Maximize your fold equity. Fucking do it. Like, just, just shove it. Be like, you know what? If you have a hand to call, great. If not, I'm taking the pot down. Done. Easy peasy, right? When he makes the min raise to 56 and leaves, like, what, two bets behind? It's... In a way, it's the opposite of what it says. When he makes that little raise, when he could have just shoved all in, it makes him look like he's saying, I want to take this pot down as cheap as possible. I don't want to risk the rest of my chips. I want to continue playing. Here's the problem. With that chips, with the stack size that he had left, he can't continue playing. He has two bets left if he folds after that raise. He is essentially all in already, just without already going all in. So, it stands to reason that by making that play, he is actually hoping for somebody to come over the top of him raising so that he can get it all in more reliably and make more chips off the pot. Um, With nine siege tanks, you just don't do well against his range. He's got a lot of air units. He's got a lot of air units that ground in particular. He's going to have Phoenix. He's going to have... Shit. I mean, like, I'm, I'm drawing blanks on specifics. But, yes. Like, he's going to have a lot of hands that beat your nine tanks. A lot. Uh, based on that raise. Um, and now you've let him get all in. Probably on the upper end of his range. While we have the way lower end of our range. Not a good look. Um, could be wrong. Let's see what happens. I'm not expecting good things. I think Frosticles is going to take the spot. Frosticles was strong anti-ground. Definitely not as strong as I thought he had. I guess he was just fucking with us. All right, my read was off. Cool. It happens. Frosticles going down in his own game. 
Frosty's treats. Oof. Okay, so that does put us in a slightly better position than what we were in before. We have a little bit over 10 bets again. I'm sorry, a little bit under 10 bets again. Um, oh, <coughs> holy shit. Three-handed. We just pick up Ravens. We're last to act. This is insane. <coughs> you can play this <coughs> almost any way you want to except for all-in. I don't think all-in is a smart play here. Why do I not want to all-in? Um, we are still three-handed. If it goes check, check, all in. Papa Smurf's going to be on the hook for the majority of his stack if he calls. Like, he's, he's almost dead if he calls and loses. He's going to need a very strong hand to call. Goldie, same deal. Going to need a very strong hand to call and all in, even though she's already down to like three and a half bets. So if you all in, you're probably just winning 64 chips. If you min raise here in last position, that looks a lot more desperate. A lot more like, I'm not interested in this hand. Y'all check to me. I'm just going to fuck around and see if I can take it down without a, a bet. Much more likely that Papa Smurf is going to call. Also fairly likely that if Goldie had a really strong hand, S tier, again, we've talked about this, Battle Cruisers carries Ravens, she's maybe setting up a check raise. Might go all in over the top of you. However, when we look at that, Battle Cruisers Carriers Ravens, we have the Ravens. Ravens counter Battle Cruisers Carriers. What's the downside? Make the min raise here in last position. See if you can get a call. Play it from the second card. See if you can maximize your profits. Perfect. I love it. Smurf gold, that sucks. Can Goldie go over the top? No. Okay. So, we literally just accomplished the exact same thing that we would have accomplished by going all in, but we risked, like, 10% of our stack on that bet. Not a bad outcome. Not bad. Could have been better. Not bad. Um. All right. So, we're getting down to shorthanded play. A little more bourbon. As you get down to shorthanded play, you should be playing more hands. Why should you be playing more hands? When you're at a full table of eight players, you have seven other hands out there that could potentially beat you. Counter you, just be stronger, just have better stats, whatever. Here we're three-handed. There's two other players. If you're playing Ravens at a seven, at an eight-handed table, there are 14 other cards out there that could be High Templars or Ghosts. Completely counter the shit out of Ravens. You're dead in the water, whatever. Out of like 44 units in the game, I think, right now. 43, 44, somewhere around there. So, not great odds to get countered, but significant odds. Like, you're going to lose a decent chunk of the time. Three-handed like this, you get Ravens. There's four of the cards you got to deal with. As long as they aren't High Templar Ghosts, you're probably good. Way more likely you're going to win the pot, make some money. This also applies as your range widens. So as you start moving down the tier list to worse units, it is way less likely because there's only those other four cards out there you're dealing with that you are going to be countered. So you can play these weaker units more aggressively in an attempt to go ahead and take down the pot without a showdown, one, which means that, you know, you're not giving away information, or two, to get called by a worse hand that they are doing the same thing. They think that, oh, okay, well, this guy's just going nuts, He's going to play anything, I'll call with my adepts. Fuck it. And you being a reasonable mind are not going that far out of line, and you can absolutely crush the adepts. But it looks like you're going out of line because you're raising so many more hands in position. Zonk with the min rays, 12 Banshees. I like it. Um, that, that was, sorry, I meant to get back on the Banshees. That was the whole point of that whole rant. Banshees at a seven-handed table, not terribly playable. At a three-handed table, second act, middle position, raise some shits. Let's do it. Uh, nine Tempests in the back, that's actually a pretty good draw. Even heads up here, Tempests are 
pretty sturdy. Long range, decent damage. They are very slow, but they're with being long range, they're going to hang back, do some decent damage, not get hit. Banshees can run up first, start taking out ground units that might hit the Tempest while they're still cloaked. Like, you have a... You're not bad off here. Like, you're going to get countered by a lot of the classic good hands, but again, you're only playing against two other people. Four cards. Not 14 cards out there. Four. A lot easier to get hands like this through successfully. Oh, that's going to be... Oh, hell yeah. There we go. Money, money, money. Stack it up, Zunk. Let's fucking go. All right. Four carriers. Good. Another raise. Under the gun. Definitely a strong hand here. Pops and rough calls. Goldie all in. This is an easy call. Uh, 23 more into a pot of 215. Like, that's not even a question. We're going to win so many chips here on average. This is not even funny. Check, check. Yep, we're going to see a three leg with the four carriers. See if that's enough to take it home. That is not going to be enough to take it home. Unless those cyclones go way the fuck over here to the... Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. The Tempests have 2-2 two, two as well, so that hurts our damage significantly from the carriers. Yeah, that's not going to work. Goldie, still in this hand, still in this game. Hell yeah. Let's fucking go. Four broods, last position. We are first in chips. Um, again, we've talked about position plays, especially as it gets to shorter-handed tables. Like, you need to make more position plays a higher percentage of the time. Um, four broods definitely doesn't have much value, but I don't think we've been that active in position, and we haven't been down to three-handed for that long. I think as we're throwing out a min-raise here, just see what we can do. If we get called, we can still get drawn out by the second card. Like, four broods aren't great, but they are support. We could draw something pretty significant. Put some tanks in front of them, put some versatile DPS in front of them, like, eh, we could draw out. Um, but, again, like, betting in position, you have both other players that said, I don't have anything, I'm checking to you, take a shot, min bet, go. Especially with the antis this high, that min bet represents a large number of chips in play. This is a little bit bigger, I appreciate the thought behind it, but I feel like the risk of risking that many chips compared to the min bet at this stage of the game, kind of outweighs the additional fold equity you get. Like, again, that's that's kind of the thing that, like, a, a, a solid Hold'em Pro would sit down with a math and say, okay, if I raise to 96 here, these are all the hands that my opponent will call with out of this many hands, right? So you get it down to a percentage, you say, like, let's say on average, he's going to call, like, when you when you raise the 2x, the 96. Let's say on average, he's going to call with the top 20% of his hands, right? And let's say that out of the 20% of the hands that he calls with, if he calls, you're only going to win 30% of the time. Just throwing numbers out there. So the Holden Pro, the Poker Pro, is going to sit down and actually do the math on... Out of all these hands that he could be playing this way, what percentage of the hands that are out there does that represent? What percentage of or out of those hands that he could be playing this way? What is my equity against that range of hands? Like if you ran the simulation against what I have versus every single hand he could have, on average, what do I make? And out of every single hand he could have up to this point, how often does he fold? And you can literally do the math of like, okay, he folds this often, so I have this much equity. He calls, and I lose this often, so I lose this much equity. But then he calls, and I win this often, so I win this much equity. And you add it all up, and you can be like, this play is profitable, this play is not profitable. Unfortunately, in Battle Poker, we don't have that specific knowledge. We can't say definitively that an ace beats a king like we can in poker, because in StarCraft Poker... Sometimes ravens get countered by ghosts. Sometimes stores get countered by zerglings. Like, good hands get countered by worse hands. So, 
it's not that exact science, but this is still math that you should be keeping in mind while you're at the table. You don't have to be exact with the math. You don't have to be like, oh, okay, well, I have a 28.17% chance of winning this hand. Fuck that. Just be like, okay, I feel like I can beat half of his hands. The other half of the hands I'm going to lose to. So if I bet this much, and then suddenly he's folding like 80% of his hands, does that justify... Does his increased fold, equi his increased fold equity, the number of times he's going to fold and give me the pot, justify the amount of chips that I am risking on this bet? That's the thought process. You, like, again, you don't have to be exact. You don't have to sit there with calculator, pen and paper, at the table. Fuck that. You have less than 30 real seconds to make your decision. But keep it in mind. Eyeball it. Get it close. Get it as, well, as close as you reasonably can. And just think, is this guy fucking with me? Is he playing straight up? What does this bet mean? How often do I win against what he's, what the hands that he's making this bet with, right? These videos would all be so much shorter if I stopped going off on tangents. Five mutas, four disruptors, second position. We are not playing this bullshit. Fold that. Hell yeah. We're out of the way. Still in first place. Not by a lot. Goldie at our heels. 21 Hellbats for position. We're not interested. Let it go. Let it go. Second card, maybe. Goldie. Let it. Let it. Mm -hmm. Family pot. 96 Zerglings does not help. We are not interested in this hand whatsoever. We have chips. We don't need to bluff. Papa Smurf is all in. Goldie calls. Ooh, Goldie should have a good hand here. And we're going to definitely let this go. Goldie! Mm. Interesting play. Okay. Did Goldie... Yeah, Goldie called. I don't think I like the call from Goldie. How much was it? Yeah, I don't think I like that call. Um, you don't have enough broods. Like, the Vikings are, are pretty great. Like, that's that's decent. But, like, you don't have enough broods on the rare occasion that, like, they show up with Cyclone, Marine, Stalker, Hydra, whatever. Seven Ravens. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Ah. Uh, 6x. Yeah, that's a good fold. Never mind. I'm sorry. Didn't do the math. 21 Widows. After Goldie races, we can't play that. That that shuts down our interest in the hand. If it checked to us, we can... We can semi-bluff that some percentage of the time. I wouldn't do it often, but like maybe like a quarter to a third of the time you can make a bet there. Um, Papa Smurf about to go down. That's a lot of Corruptor. I know they're bunched up, but... Those Liberators are going down way too quick. Just not doing enough damage. They're good libs. And we are heads up. Now, unfortunately, we are going into heads up at a pretty significant disadvantage. A, we have like eight bets. Not even that. So we're, we're pretty short stack. Goldie's going to have like 12, 13, 14, something like that. Um, so we don't have a lot of room to play poker. We have to play a lot of hands straight up. We have to better strong hands, fold our weak hands, occasionally bluff. Still a thing. Never give up on that. But we have so few chips, we have to be fairly confident in our plays to really make this work. Um, 24 wildcats, wildcats, wild cards. Um, 24 wild cards, insanely strong hand heads up. And I know I already talked about, don't over, don't overvalue them, um, but we are heads up. There are literally only two cards we're going against. It is an insanely good, uh, insanely good odds that the 24 wild cards are ahead here. Um, as we are behind, I would love to see him go ahead and make a min raise here. Take the 44 chips. That's almost 5% of the chips in play. B 
Be aggressive. If you get called, fucking great. You have 24 wild cards. Holy shit. Um, there's tons of second cards that go well with that. There's probably a ton of cards that Goldie called with that you might still be ahead of. Um, but I think my main point here is even without the card, when you're going into heads up short stack, you kind of want to set the precedent of I'm not going to fold down. I'm not going to check down. I'm not just giving you every hand. You're going to have to fight for it. Um, Min bet a lot, especially in position, meaning you act last. Um, when your first act like Zunk is here, ten towards the higher end of your range, your stronger hands. When your last act and your opponent checks to you, you should be betting like 70, 80 percent of your hands. I feel like they're gonna fold the vast majority of the of the time, and when they call. You still have equity against a good number of their hands. Heads up is so wide. Like, the range is so wide of what you need to be playing to be profitable. Um, it, it, it's... You make a lot of calls that look really silly, but in, like, 9 out of 10 alternate universes, it's a profitable call. You, you make it and you're right, you know? Um, but, again, like, heads up is also a very touch and feel game. You are only playing against one other person. You do not have to worry about all of this like, oh, I'm first to act. If I raise here, what happens to the other seven people behind me? You're literally just worried about one other person. And if you can get a read on them, you can play damn near perfectly against them. Um, and I think that a lot of setting up your heads up game to not be really readable Especially because more people will pay attention when their head's up versus, like, full ring. Like, full ring, people will I'll tab, watch YouTube, talk on Discord, shit like that. When it gets the heads up, people will fucking buckle down and pay attention. So, to go into heads up with the right attitude, the right inertia, all that good stuff, come out guns blazing. Fire away. Especially with a hand like this good, fucking do it. Bet away. Set the standard that I'm going to be betting, you're going to have to deal with me, fucking make a decision. Zunk checks. Probably going for the check raise. Let's see what the goalie does. Does raise. Zunk should. Well. Um. I hate this raise size. This is a dumb raise size. And I'll tell you why. You're committed. You're all in. You're never folding those 83 chips if Goldie goes all in. So what are you trying to communicate to her by not going all in? That you're weak? Not, not believable. Like, no, you're not folding. Are you strong? Yeah, probably. So when you have this hand of a, this, a hand that's this strong, and then you telegraph strength, you're going to get a lot of folds. You don't want folds when you're that strong. You want to get called. You want to make money. I would really like to call here, and then maybe lead out on the second card. Twenty-five mutas, Terran two-two. I would love a bet again. Another min raise. There we go. Perfect. And suddenly we're back in this game. Wreck the even stacks. Eight mutas is unfortunately not a calling hand. Yep, we're gonna get out of the way being in first position. Seventeen marauders is playable heads up at lower anti levels. I don't like it when we're playing for like. Over 10% of your stack for a, a min bet. Now we're at 60. We're both under 10 bets. Goldie min raises. You can't call it 16 reapers. Gotta fold. You can't. Yeah. It's a shitty situation. This is gonna be mostly a raise here. Even with 20 add we need a raise. Min raise is fine. Okay. Let me go back and say why the min raise is fine. The min raise is fine because it sets you up to all in on the second card and it makes it a believable all in. You are making the smaller raise first card. It looks like a smaller raise because you're trying to get calls, right? 
you 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 when you bet smaller, it's more enticing for your opponent to stay in the pot. They're getting better odds. So when you bet small, you're either enticing your opponents to stay in, where you can shove the second card, or they shove over the top of you, which again, if you're strong and you're telegraphing well, you're strong and you're telegraphing weakness, so that should be fucking perfect. Um but it's all right. We're all in here. 20 add-ups, 11 investors. Definitely the lower end of our range, but it's not off the table for a heads-up pot. Ooh, that's going to hurt. Fungal's going off. Maybe Neural the in the uh, Liberator. No Neural. Add-ups going down. Slowly but surely. Right, I'm slowly ticking down here. GG. And Goldie wins uh, Frosty's... Frosty's Treats game. I think she won like 50 bucks American, something like that. So not too bad. So yeah, that's uh, another game in the books for uh, my little coaching training series. Um, I'm going to try to keep doing these like maybe once a week or so, give or take, once every other week, depending on my time. Um, this is fun. Like it, it helps me think about the game. It helps me teach y'all about the game, get more people involved, get more people better. Like I really want to elevate the average level of Battle Poker players with this series. So if you have questions, if you have comments, if you want to submit your own replay, we can go over it together. If you want to discuss strategy, hit me up in Discord, drop a comment below, something, whatever, get in touch with me, I got you. We'll talk, we'll make it happen. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, making yourself a battle poker player, better battle poker player. Until next time, I'm Bati, see y'all later.